13,980 pounds. A big bad beauty of a front kitchen Montana making landfall here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And they did uh, the same thing with this full-time warranted RV that they did with their front living Montana. They gave it an elevated rear sleeping area, which created a huge amount of additional outside storage that otherwise front kitchen models just severely lack. Now the design of this RV, it's, it's, hand, it's definitely built with destination intentions in use. If, if you really wanted to, for some reason, you could weave your way, I suppose, between these slides to get to that pair of height bed sofas. I don't think you'd really want to do that, though. But if you are traveling and you just need to stop, you just need to take a little bit of a break, the redesign on the upper deck of this RV is far more travel-friendly than it used to be because you can get up here, you can walk, you can access the refrigerator, you could sit down, you could have yourself a bite to eat. There's a lot more you can do with this RV when it's closed than the original Montana Front Kitchen allowed you to do. But when you have this thing all opened up, like I'm coming in from the bedroom and the bathroom deck right now, you walk into the sucker and just whoa it has that kind of whoa buddy sort of look and feel to it it is a class apart it is just this is this is uh you know full-time living right here just defined this is the definition of rv full-time living they just nailed it nailed it nailed it every single aspect of this starting right up top because man I tell you, you might want to pop some popcorn, by the way. This is not going to be my shortest RV video tour. Up top, we've got a now 12-volt ceiling fan so that you don't have to necessarily be plugged into park power. If you are, maybe off-grid or just stop a little bit, you can keep some air moving. And you can see next to that, we have a max air vent fan complete with rain sensor. Really doing an awesome job of pumping out a lot of air there. Normally, you'd find one of these in the kitchen. You see one over here in the living room. But don't worry, because you have another Max Air Vent fan with a rain sensor over there in the kitchen, directly above your stovetop. So the area where you're going to potentially generate the greatest amount of heat in this RV also happens to have another one of those fans there. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Now, you'll find they also have this really cool indirect kind of almost track lighting above all of their um, uh, trim up top. And it... It sets it off. It just really kind of accents everything beautifully in here. And especially at night when you want to turn off all the main cabin lights and just get kind of a little bit of an indirect glow, it's perfect little night lighting. We will come back to the living room. First though, this is the front kitchen. I want to focus on the front kitchen. As we work our way up there, you see the uh, central vacuum system complete with what I call the um, electric dustpan. The little rectangle at the bottom there, if you just kind of go and click that thing up with your toe, you can just sweep right into it. Oh man, speaking of which, huge update in the history of Montana's here. At a glance, you go, God bless America, why'd they put carpet in here? It's not. It is a vinyl floor covering made specifically for this purchase. This, or purpose, rather not purchase, although you can purchase it here at Haylet RV. <laughs> but this is not carpet. That is not carpet. This is a completely carpetless coach. Upper deck, lower deck, kitchen deck, every deck is carpetless in this. And that is an awesome feature. This is basically the same kind of stuff that you get in like a indoor, outdoor kind of throw rug in a sense. Now, it's well hidden, but our control panel is actually uh, right here. And it just kind of looks like a cabinet. And all of your buttons, bells, whistles, and switches are all right here. But they all kind of hide away nicely, including our uh, switches for our 12-volt tank heaters. Upstairs here, we will have all solid surface counters, and uh, the kitchen is a little unconventional, but it's really neat, it's really fun, it really, really works. The focal point of it, though, is hands down this front wraparound dining arrangement, and this is a uh, something that kind of carried over from uh, the original Montana 3820 front kitchen, Montana being the originator of front kitchen fifth wheels in the RV industry. Everyone else has kind of worked off of their success from that. Up top here, one thing you won't see is the air conditioner, and you don't see the square, so you won't hear the air, because this has dual 15,000 BTU dual whisper ducted air so that bedroom air conditioner also whisper ducted in a full montana they're very good that way all of our windows by the way have day and night slow rise shade so you always maintain a lot of privacy but the the views of this one if you have like a site that overlooks 
a river or a creek or a lake or something like that. Or if you're here at Camp Haylet, which is a fancy talk for our driveway, <laughs> um, you have an awesome view of our uh, sales center right over there. Now, the uh, uh, dining area over here allows families to just really wrap right around this thing and have a cool family meal. And that's what's neat about this. This is intended, I think, primarily to be a couple's RV. However, it has some of the best guest entertaining and weekend sleeping capacity I think you could ever hope to find in a layout like this. And I don't know if I want to go left or right, but I'm leaning a little bit more left right now. Notice there's household outlets just all over this. There's like 10 sets of household outlets in this upper deck alone before you even get into the living area. Now, this is an interesting small slide. The cabinet above the sink, of course, I should pay attention to the camera because the, the window's blacking it out right now. But the whole sink arrangement up through, this is one interestingly shaped slide out. But it works. I also, I wanted to um, crack the top off of that uh, sink cover right there. It is a flush mount um, uh, solid surface sink cover because you can see we have this high rise sprayer faucet and big stainless farm sink next to your stainless kind of veggie prep sink, if you will. And down below that, we have all sorts of storage space. We will make a second pass through this kitchen with the storage open. I want you to get to see it in its sort of clean, uh, you know, daily use version first. Over here, we have our 18 cubic foot gas and electric fridge freezer. This, uh, this floor plan can be built either way with a 18 cubic foot residential uh, electric only fridge or the 18 cubic foot gas electric fridge. Due to a bunch of different reasons that I have covered in a bunch of other videos, we are by far larger proponents of the gas electric RV refrigerator in RVs because it is actually built and designed with the purposes of being used in an RV, not bounced, uh, you know, it can handle being bounced down the road. An electric only fridge cannot. Plus, they're both 18 cubic foot and there's no price difference between them. So wouldn't you rather have the peace of mind of having that automatic backup for you? Um, Anyway, I've got, I'll, let me get off my pulpit. I always tell myself I'm not going to get on my soapbox, and I always end up doing that. Let's look at the storage. Starting up top, we got that handy wine rack right there in case it's wine time. And obviously, you see you have a convection microwave right here. So this can be normal microwave, or you can actually do some baking in it. And it will cook 25% faster on average and introduce, on average again, 25% less heat into your RV. What's also neat is this little slide-out prep shelf. It's just very cool. You can have this open so you can set stuff down. Maybe you've got something hot in here or something like that, like a bowl. It gives you a place to set this down real quick and then adjust your hot pad so that you can then pick it up and take it wherever you want. Down below that, we have our first chunk of pantry space. Um, and it's interesting. They, they found a way to really hide nooks and crannies and storage all over this thing and they did a great job of it that's a larger 22 inch oven by the way so you can actually do some real baking in there and they still have a spot for a wastebasket that's just something montana's good at or you could take that out of there that's also where your sink covers would store next to that by the way this is really smart so to the right of that stovetop is a big chunk of open counter space and a set of household outlets that is probably the best position in this RV right there for like a big coffee machine. So that would probably be your coffee corner. Up top here, we also have a gas strut, or not gas strut, but metallic strut assisted uh, little, um, well, struts <laughs> to hold that door open. I am, I am severely dehydrated from being outside and doing these videos all day today. Working our way around here, this interesting little sink arrangement. I forgot to open the cabinets above the sink, but you get the idea. There's cabinets above the sink. Down below here, though, we have full extension plywood box drawers, and you have plenty of space below the sink for like a dedicated little spot there for dish soaps and whatnot. So they've done a good job of really intelligently giving you just enough of what you need in every area you need it. And I said uh, that chunk below the microwave was our first pantry. You've got a little kind of interesting storage pocket there. But above that, you have what I like to call a pop-out perfect pantry. And I am a sucker for this stuff. I love it when storage comes to me and I don't have to go to the storage. It is just simple, smart, easy. It's exactly the kind of thing I look for for an easy, comfortable living experience. Back downstairs, we're first met by a power theater recliner. 
It also has heat and massage. It also has a central little armrest to keep your remote controls from wandering around, which is super handy in transit. Those suckers bounce all over the place. And it has USB plugs built right into that open-close controller, so you can always keep your phones topped off. Now, you have symmetrical sofa slides. Both slides are exactly the same. You've got a trifold hide bed that we'll see open in a minute with windows galore. This RV has great window coverage on both sides. You know, a lot of RVs have windows on side A or B. This one, this RV just has windows everywhere. And they have household outlets hidden right over here in the corner. So even the guests have a place to run things. And what's kind of cool, you have little dimmer switch lighting here within the slide outs. So kind of like you have that indirect track lighting in the overhead area, you have a lot of what I call night mode, stealth mode kind of lighting in this RV so that if you do have somebody over here or if it's the evening or you've got a grandkid or some guests sleeping on the height of bed and they're not familiar with the layout of the RV, everyone can kind of still see what they're doing without having enough light to really disrupt everybody. Storage above that entertainment center, and that TV is on a big old swing arm pivot. It can pivot either way. So if you want to sit on the theater seat while you have some guests over here and still have a conversation while you're both watching TV or whatever, you can do that. Um, and below, we have that uh, electric space heating fireplace. What is cool, though, that is not the only electric heater in this RV. Our air conditioner system also has a 16,500 BTU heat pump built into it. So this RV has uh, over 21,000 BTUs of heating power without ever turning on the propane furnace, which you can then supplement even further. That is one of the reasons this is an excellent hot, cold camp RV. And once again, they just did so many things right. So it's a couple's camper with easy sleeping for four to six, not just kids, but adults. This is adult-sized guest sleeping, which is great. And again, that TV can pivot around. You can make it face either sofa. And take a look. You have day-night two-section blackout roller shades over here. Look at those, and then look at the other window. Look at how far past the window those things extend. If you just straight want to blot out the sun, this is an awesome model to accomplish that. From there, we find ourselves heading to the upper deck, which is where the master bed and bath is located. And really... It, it seems weird, it's like a rear upper deck. How is that really any different from a front upper deck? That's normal. You know, this has all the same stuff. It's just on the back of the RV instead of the front. But it feels different for some reason, doesn't it? Yet another of the big rain sensory max air vent fans also complete with a uh, wall control panel. Uh, you know, this has three of those big fans built right into it. And what is smart, and it's it was hard for me to try to get a good still photo of this, which is why I like to put the videos together. Over here, you can see how this has an extra little kind of, uh, you know, place for your body washes or a couple extra little towels so that you can keep just enough things you need right here in the bathroom. Now, uh, above that seamless one-piece fiberglass molded shower, um, you have that skylight there, and you do, of course, have a corner seat so you can sit down for some bathing comfort. And a full Montana, unlike even a high country, it's one of the things that's pretty exclusive, is that uh, adjustable height shower hardware right there. Now, when we come over here, you can see that even in the little kind of personal lavatory area, we have um, good storage going on. Let me get in here and open this up. You can see you've got plywood drawers to the floor over here. Place for a little bathroom wastebasket. That's a nice touch. And this stainless sink is enclosed in a sealed edge countertop. So even here, we've got a water resistant material going on. And that is a large mirrored medicine cabinet. So if you've got, uh, you gotta keep your Lipitor with you, you've got plenty of space for it. And this rear bedroom master suite, it's just awesome. It is just absolutely awesome. Uh, one of the, I don't even know where to start. I, I got to just start rattling off features here because they have so many. They've added a third window above the headboard into the bed slides of a full Montana. It is not an airflow window. It's just for viewing, but it does have a pull-out, pull-down blackout shade. Both of the cross breeze uh, windows, though, on the sides of the bed slide will obviously open for airflow. But a neat thing Montana does in their bed slides they have side stands with little household outlets, and wouldn't you know it, those are just perfectly sized to fit a little traveler CPAP. Having outlets directly in a slide box like that is harder to do. It's harder to build that way. 
But that's just kind of Montana doing Montana things. And with all the windows of this thing, all the visibility, like if you just look at this RV from the outside, you see the front windshield go, oh, it must be like a front living or something like that. And then you see that there's these huge windows on the backside. You're like, what is this thing? Is this a front and rear living room? Like it has such a confusing look because it's just covered in glass. It has all this awesome coverage here. And thankfully, it also has some really outstanding personal storage space over here. And it's neat how they did this. It's unconventional, but it really, really works. So if you open up all these doors, and the RV's not level, so the doors are just not at all cooperating with me, you see that you've got, like, it passes all the way through here. But behind the TV, there's this extra shelf. However, the clothes hanging bar persists all the way through. So you kind of have, like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can hang a ton of stuff in here, but you also have some extra little hidden shelf space and dresser space. And that's before we even open the nine dresser drawers in this huge storage array below the closet, which are all full extension, which are all plywood boxed. You know, this is designed, if you're going to do that full-time living thing, you're going to want every single square inch, every cubic foot of nook and cranny space that they're providing here. They just aren't in the business of wasting anything. And before I forget to talk about it, the bedroom TV here, notice how it's on a bit of a downward angle. So it is always facing your head. So even here in the bedroom, you have a no neck wrecker entertainment center, just like across from the theater seat or the pivot TV in the living room, you're not gonna wreck your neck watching TV in this Montana. But we're still not done. I love that, uh, you know, exposed, almost cast iron looking sliding door hardware that gives us our bedroom privacy. But over here, what looks like uh, almost a pitiful excuse for like a shallow cabinet opens up and turns out to be anything but. Because not only is this the location where you could install a combo or stackable washer and dryer, it is otherwise, for the other 98% of folks who aren't really interested in washers and dryers, that's a statistical fact, by the way, yet again, a huge dresser and additional closet space. It's different, but it works, and it's awesome. We have been getting pummeled with new RV inventory here at Halet RV today, so unfortunately, I don't quite have the room to pop the awnings plural open for you but that is a key key thing i want you to think about we'll talk about this more when we wrap around the back side but they didn't just throw an awning over the top of that middle slide out on the door side they did a split awning very similar to something like say a, a fusion toy hauler would do uh so that you've got like a front entry awning and then a rear kind of dedicated camp patio awning um, the automotive front windshield up front there is one of the things that uh, Montana has really become known for. They are really the reason that a lot of manufacturers have since adopted a, uh, a front windshield on a lot of their big RVs. But then again, Montana being the single most successful thing ever in the luxury fifth wheel class, they pretty much set the standard for pretty much everybody else. Um, you can see that we have applied the optional slide awnings to the one here in this video. That's something that the price of those has gotten far, far more affordable and it just makes more and more sense to get them from the factory level because not only are they now less expensive than we could do them aftermarket, they are also included under the manufacturer's full-time RV warranty. And that is the thing, Montana is and has been the number one selling RV to full-timers out there on the planet Earth. For I don't even know how many years. They just, it's just not, it's a race for second place against Montana every year. Uh, it also has, even though this is a big model and it's really set up to be an awesome destination use coach, uh, it, it handles nicely. And that's actually one of the things Mr. Halet, his most recent demo was a Montana 3120 and he's always still ranting and raving about how well that thing tows despite having towed so many RVs in his uh, career in his lifetime. And it's, partially due to this Road Armor pin box system, but it's also due to the matching Road Armor uh, suspension system, which has shock dampening both above and below the uh, um, bronze bushings. And uh, it also has wet bolt fasteners, which if you don't know what all that means, give our team a call. Long story short, they spend more money on their running gear here than some brands. Jayco does a lot of very similar things, I'll say that. You have a six-point hydraulic automatic leveling system right here, and there's just the little things. They have a handy little um, sewer hose caddy right here 
under their uh, you know centralized command center or rather docking station is a better way to phrase it not command center so that you can keep your black tank stuff away from all that other stuff now there's all kinds of hullabaloo and misinformation out there about four seasons this and arctic insulation blah blah whatever the fact is montanas are and have been zero degree proven tested since 2005 and counting and things like 12 volt tank heaters certainly don't hurt that in their insulated enclosed heated underbelly and even the small front passer compartment still has a dedicated heat duct running directly into it two of them actually um, and our central uh, vacuum outlet is down there as well now, it doesn't really show you too awful much, but just for what it's worth, I do want you to see that it does have an enclosed belly, and over here, part of the reason that you still have some semblance of front storage is due to that drop frame right there, which also makes our command, or God bless America, our docking station easier to get to. Ah! I got a cramp. I okay, crisis averted. Over here by the suspension, this is what I was talking about. If you look at this road armor system, there's shock dampening both above and below those fittings. And that helps take so much of that chatter when you're going down the road out of it that instead of that getting translated up into the RV, which just jars stuff loose, or into your vehicle, which makes you not have a good time when you're uh, towing, it just gives you a better, smoother ride. Now, very similar to the popular 3790 Montana or their front living Montana. I think it's the 3740 or whatever. I don't know, the, the, you get the idea. There's a lot of alphabet soup and I can't even keep all the model numbers straight at times. You have an elevated rear area back there which creates the capacity to have a, uh, a slide out telescoping like diesel pusher cargo tray underneath your rear bedroom. And this thing is awesome i i gotta double check the sticker i think it's got about a what is it 600 pound capacity we're gonna get up to it and maybe i'll be able to spot that in a second but this thing rolls out smooth as butter and the cool part about this is that it's not just giving us a 800 pound capacity by the way 800 pounds it's not just giving us a huge open cargo space you see that you can get to the cargo on both sides there's just a ton of aluminum holding this thing together down here it has its own forced air heat duct but the cool thing is this could also be used for stuff like kayaks this doesn't have to be totes this doesn't have to be lawn games. It could be. You could have fold-up picnic tables and lawn chairs in here if you are so inclined. But if you want a place to be able to actually put your bicycles, enclose them. I know Mr. Halet, he spent some serious money on a set of very nice bicycles that uh, he didn't just want open to the elements. This RV would suit him very, very well. Um, and again, front kitchen, front living room models historically have had crap for outside storage, which obviously not the case here now i said we'd come back and talk about the double awnings you can see how you've got the there's a front awning that goes over the um door side kitchen slide which is funny because this has slide out awnings and the front power awning goes over the slide out awning but not every single montana you find out there is going to have the slide awnings that's just an extra thing we like to put on them here at halid rv but you've got a like a, a covered entry area and then you've got this very private rear patio space over here. That's why your outside speakers are over here. The cool thing about this is because that slide out is right there, it kind of creates a bit of an imaginary line where you're not just sort of open and exposed to the passers-by at, at the campsites or anything like that. There's sort of a, like, if I'm back here, I'm looking for privacy kind of vibe that goes into this. And it creates a very, <laughs> I don't want to say, intimate area because it sounds like I'm seducing our customers. <laughs> this thing has like a football field of a roof. It's just woof, it just keeps on going. But it makes sense. It's a pretty big RV. What's cool about that though, is they gave it a, uh, a light colored roof membrane so that it's not just absorbing a ton of sun and heating this thing to death. The other thing is, you see this little plug over there? That is your solar prep plug. And if you want to, you could just go panel crazy over this thing. They left you a blank canvas. And I suppose if you wanted to go like way, way off grid and run the thing full solar all the time, you have more space up here. That would probably require more specialized hardware, severe battery banks, things like that. Now up front here, you see that this is a low profile 15,000 BTU air conditioner. So that this thing can still fit under an overpass because 
she is a pretty big girl, obviously. So, other than me being a little goofier than normal from heat, exhaustion, and dehydration, I think we've pretty much accomplished our goals here today. And if you'd like to, you know, contact a place that's willing to go uh, literally to extreme heights on top of RVs like this to show you the ins and the outs and the ups and the downs of the RVs that you might be purchasing from us. I would just welcome you to give us a call here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We have 15 acres of RVs here. Uh, actually, more than that now that we've opened our consignment location. You know, we don't do hidden dealer fees. But short of that, we do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Haylet camping during our 30th anniversary year, everyone.